Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Choi. I am the director of endoscopy at the Los Angeles Endoscopy Center. I'm also a fellow member of American Gastroenterological Association. In this video, I will be discussing colonic polyp and its follow-up once it has been removed. Colonoscopy is recommended currently at the age of 50 for average risk individual for the detection of colonic polyp and colon cancer. Up to 50% of Americans have one or more colonic polyp when colonoscopy is performed. Most colonic polyps when detected during colonoscopy is removed. However, this does not indicate that the problem has been completely solved because there is up to 35% to 50% chance of recurrence of the colonic polyp even after the polyp has been removed. To determine what character characteristics are important in predicting the likelihood of the recurrence of colonic polyps, we need to carefully determine the type of polyp that has been removed and other characteristics that are thought to be important in predicting the future recurrence of colonic polyps. One important feature that may indicate the likelihood of the recurrence of the polyp as well as developmental colon cancer is the histology. The histology is basically the type of cells that are found in the polyp when looked under the microscope. The most common type of colonic polyps are hypoplastic polyps and adnormalous polyps. Hypoplastic polyps usually have virtually no risk of developing into a colon cancer. Thus, you do not need to worry about that. On the other hand, adnormalous polyps comprising up to 75% of all polyps removed has increased likelihood of recurrence up to 50% at 3 years. Thus, if adnormalous polyps are found, then not only should it be removed, but recurrence is of concern and follow-up colonoscopy needs to be performed. Another characteristic that may determine the likelihood of recurrence of colonic polyp is the number of polyps detected. If only one or two polyps are found during colonoscopy, the likelihood of recurrence of the polyp is low. On the other hand, if more than three polyps are found, then the likelihood of recurrence is high, as well as the possibility that one or two polyps have been missed during the initial colonoscopy. These individuals with multiple polyps need to be followed more closely. Additional feature that we look for when deciding the risk of redevelopment of the polyp or the recurrence is the size of the polyp. If the size of the colonic polyp is less than one centimeter, the risk of recurrence 
and future development of colon cancer appear to be low. But if the polyp is large, larger than one centimeter, the risk appears to be higher. And in fact, patients with colonic polyp that is greater than two centimeter in size, harboring concomitant colon cancer cells in the polyp appears to be up to 20% of the cases that we see. So larger the polyp, the higher the risk. And finally, the shape of the colonic polyp also appears to be important. If the polyp is a small polyp or polyp that has a stalk, a pedunculated polyp, the likelihood of complete removal is high and these polyps appear to carry lower risk of recurrence. On the other hand, polyps that are flat, sessile, a pancake-like polyps are more difficult to remove and complete removal is may require several attempts and in fact a special technique called endoscopic submucosal dissection may be re required in certain cases. To summarize, important features that we look for in assessing for the risk of uh, colon cancer and recurrence of the polyp in patients who are found to have colonic polyps during their initial colonoscopies include the type of polyp that is found. Was it a hypoplastic polyp or an abnormalous polyp? How many polyps were there? Were there only one or two? Or were there three or more? How large was the polyp? Was the polyp smaller than one centimeter in size? Or was it a lot larger? Finally, was it a small pedunculated polyp or flat sessile polyp? These are important features that we look for when assessing colonic polyps detected during initial colonoscopy and in determining how closely one needs to be followed for evaluation of recurrence as well as the development of colon cancer. Thank you for listening.